Caution, mind-boggling revelations ahead. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 iconic TV roles that were almost played by other actors. Everything that I do, everything, I do it to protect this family. And if you're curious to see which actors had the gall to walk away from shows like Game of Thrones, why not check out WatchMojo UK's list of the top 10 actors who turned down Game of Thrones. For this list, we're looking at well-known small screen roles that could have ended up being very different had they gone to other actors. But that's their solution. Why not open the hood and poke around? We're excluding people who still ended up with a main role on the show, like Courtney Cox, who read for the part of Rachel on Friends before being cast as Monica. Oh God, Monica, hi, thank God. Number 10, Hank Azaria as Joey Tribbiani, Friends. Yeah, like you could find something as sophisticated as this. <laughs> it's a little hard to imagine anyone other than Matt LeBlanc playing Joey, the show's lovable goofball with a penchant for women and sandwiches. However, future Friends alumni Hank Azaria tried desperately to land the part. Increased job satisfaction and family togetherness are poison for a purveyor of mind-numbing intoxicants like myself. The longtime Simpsons voice actor once admitted that the role of Joey Tribbiani was, quote, the only job I ever auditioned for twice. In regard to LeBlanc's season one performance, Azaria went on to say, quote, I could have been funnier than him. Azaria eventually changed his opinion, thank God, and went on to appear in five episodes of the iconic sitcom as David, a physicist that Phoebe falls for. Um, were you planning on kissing me ever? <laughs> uh, that's definitely a, a valid question, and uh, the answer would be yes. Number nine, Katherine Heigl as Jen Lindley, Dawson's Creek. Here goes, um, I'm pregnant. Katherine Heigl, known for her work in the stoner comedy Knocked Up, as well as for her time on Grey's Anatomy, nearly landed a role on another super successful TV show years earlier. The role in question was that of Jen Lindley on Dawson's Creek, one that ultimately went to future Academy Award nominee Michelle Williams. Hey guys, Jen. According to the show's creator, Kevin Williamson, he was very impressed with Heigl, saying, quote, she gave a great audition. I remember we were all sort of like, wow, she's good. Despite this glowing review, he decided to go with Williams, and the rest is history. So come on, live it up, go out, have a good time, meet some new people. Number eight, Thomas Jane as Don Draper, Mad Men. I'm living like there's no tomorrow, because there isn't one. Mad Men would not be Mad Men without John Hamm, plain and simple. His nuanced performance as 60s ad exec Don Draper won him two Golden Globes, and cemented his legacy as one of the small screen's all-time greats. And yet the role was almost played by Thomas Jane. The Punisher star actually turned down the role, which begs the question, what was he thinking? This was not the only time Jane brushed shoulders with an iconic role only to keep on walking, as he was Frank Darabont's first choice to play Rick Grimes on The Walking Dead. But when HBO passed on the show, Jane went elsewhere. It's open! We gotta do this now! Number seven, Connie Britton as Olivia Pope, Scandal. This is where it's all gonna happen. It's all gonna happen Shake right it. here. Connie Britton, best known for playing Tammy Taylor on Friday Night Lights, has appeared in dozens of films and TV shows over the years, and she came pretty close to adding Scandal to that list back in 2012. She was one of ABC's first choices for the role of Olivia Pope, which was an issue for creator Shonda Rhimes, who'd written the part with a black woman in mind. The network ultimately relented, and Kerry Washington was cast as Pope making her the first black woman to land a leading role in a television drama in over 30 years. Excuse me? Number six, Katie Holmes as Buffy Summers, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That was just another day on the job. Care to step up for some overtime? Buffy the Vampire Slayer could have looked a whole lot different had a couple of well-known actors said yes instead of no. Katie Holmes was offered the role of Buffy Summers and Ryan Reynolds was approached to play her friend Xander. Both actors wound up passing, opening the door for Sarah Michelle Gellar and Nicholas Brendan, respectively. Seeing as how Holmes and Reynolds both went on to have successful careers in the entertainment industry, we doubt they regret their decision. As for Gellar and Brendan, well, one could argue that Buffy and Xander remain their best known roles. Boy, you really thought this through. Number five, Dana Delaney as Carrie Bradshaw, Sex and the City. I don't wanna have to tell you this, but I actually saw him give someone a thumbs up. Sex and the City made waves for its groundbreaking subject matter and plethora of unique characters. At the forefront was protagonist Carrie Bradshaw, who was played to perfection by Sarah Jessica Parker. 
However, it was Dana Delaney and not Parker who was offered first crack at the role. So why did Delaney pass on the show that would later become a cultural phenomenon? Sex. It was because of the sex. In an interview with the Daily Mail, she said, quote, I didn't want to be in a show about sex. The part went to Sarah Jessica Parker, and it made her into a worldwide star. But I've got no regrets. Fair enough. I had just done so many movies about sex. I said to him, I can't do so another boring. one. I can't, yeah. I can't. <laughs> Number four, Matthew Broderick as Walter White, Breaking Bad. My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, this one's surprising to say the least. We have a hard time picturing Matthew Broderick as Walter White telling his wife, I am the one who knocks with any sort of believability. I am the one who knocks. And yet it almost came to fruition. Broderick and John Cusack were AMC's first choices for the role of the cancer-suffering chemistry teacher who turns to a life of crime in order to support his family. They were hesitant to go with Brian Cranston, showrunner Vince Gilligan's initial choice. But after Gilligan showed them an episode of The X-Files in which Cranston played a terminally ill anti-Semite, they gave in. It's truly scary to think what might have been. You let that sink in. Number three, Rob Lowe as Derek Shepard, Grey's Anatomy. I'm gonna give you an incentive. Whoever finds the answer rides with me. Unlike our previous entry, this one is considerably less far-fetched. Rob Lowe was the first actor up for the part of Derek Shepard, also known as McDreamy, a part that ultimately went to Patrick Dempsey. According to Lowe, he, quote, agreed to meet with the people making Grey's Anatomy, and he read the script, feeling that the writing was, quote, crisp, real, and very entertaining. In the end, Lowe passed in order to play, get this, another doctor. That's right, folks. Lowe accepted the role of Dr. Billy Grant on the short-lived CBS series, Dr. Vegas. In contrast, Grey's Anatomy is still going strong more than a decade later. That's all I know. Number two, Matt LeBlanc as Phil Dunphy, Modern Family. Still, just so much good family time. Could you honestly picture anyone other than Ty Burrell playing Phil Dunphy? The role has earned him two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series, and we feel confident saying that Modern Family would not be the same without him. Of course, we wouldn't be discussing Burrell or his most iconic character if another well-known actor hadn't almost landed the part before him. Matt LeBlanc was offered the part of Dunphy, but turned it down. Didn't I tell you? Always showing off. He said he felt the script was great, but that he would, quote, be doing the project an injustice if he accepted the role. Now that is the kind of maturity that only comes from a seasoned vet. Bad luck! Bad luck! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. You're like my sister. Helen, with our families. We need each other. From what Jamal's told me, I'm surprised all your little lion cubs aren't in rehab. Did you ever think we'd end up being roommates? Not once. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. Oh, isn't it nice to be suddenly so highly regarded? Number one, Chris Rock as George Costanza, Seinfeld. Told me to go to hell and I took the bus home. <laughs> yes, you heard that correctly. Actor and comedian Chris Rock was offered the role of George Costanza, Jerry's neurotic, socially awkward best friend, but ultimately turned it down. I'm out, baby! I'm out! According to casting director Mark Hirschfeld, quote, we saw every actor we could possibly see in Los Angeles in the hunt to find the perfect George. Danny DeVito and Nathan Lane were also considered before Seinfeld and Larry David settled on Jason Alexander. This was not the only character to have almost been played by someone else, as Elaine was almost played by none other than Rosie O'Donnell. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not at all. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.